So I'm going to show you a picture of a furnace, something we used to call an octopus, because it kind of looked like an octopus. Let me kind of explain what this thing is. This is a gravity furnace. Now that means it originally came with no fan to blow the air around. The pipes that you see, the very large diameter pipes, were all natural draft. When the uh, air would come across the heat exchanger inside, it would heat it up, and of course it would start to move upward because it was lighter. And then you had these pipes go out uh, to different areas of the house. They usually put the uh, suppliers uh, in the center location of the house which is kind of opposite of how we do it now. And they put the return air, usually somewhere around the front door, usually. But uh, it was towards the outside of the house. And it was all natural draft, so it required the heat of the furnace to move the air. And it was, eventually it was just bypassed. I mean, there was no way that was going to be a really good effective heating system. It was better than what was before it, because which would be like an oil stove or something in the middle of the room. But this was, and you know, this was a, a central system. Uh, later on, there were fans added to these things. Some of them were added on the very top of the furnace. Some of them were added at the return air. There was a return air box that they put a fan in. And uh, that gave them a little bit longer life. They also were usually fired when they first came out. They were either fired with coal or wood. Of course, if it was fired with wood, then it would have to, you'd have to uh, put wood into it constantly. You know, and you'd bank the fire at night and so on. You had very little control of the temperature of the thing. Uh, later on, uh, there were uh, coal stokers were added to these things where you'd have a stoker that would uh, have a little screw inside the, the uh, stoker. It would go to the bottom of this thing and it would feed coal in there. And when the thermostat turned on, the, it would start moving coal through. When the thermostat turned off, it would stop moving coal through. Also had a a little bit of a combustion air fan usually in there too. Later on they, they put oil burners in them and these were pressure burners. Uh, actually that was a fairly big leap. Uh, if you had a coal stoker or wood, of course you had to put wood in it all the time. A coal stoker, stoker you'd have to put coal in the stoker every couple of days usually depending on temperature. I know my dad had one of these things and he was down there every couple days filling the stoker up out of the coal bin, which was in the basement. When it came to oil, then that stuff all kind of went away. And these, you know, the, the, the coal stoker was kind of an add-on, we'll call it a conversion burner, converting it from wood to coal. Uh, when oil came about, they would just have this pressure burner in there, and it was a, a converted. It was converted to oil. And later on, and this was where I live. It was probably in the '60s when natural gas was getting really popular. The local utility would sometimes. They would approach customers and say, if you want natural gas and you don't have to order oil and have an oil tank and all that stuff and the service that goes with it, uh, you could have gas and we will put in a conversion burner in your existing furnace. They would, uh, they would do that. That's what this one that I've been picturing, that's what it is. It's, it's natural gas. There's a pipe coming down from the ceiling on the left of that thing and that's natural gas. 
and there's a burner inside there uh, that is made for natural gas. What these things all had in common was the original furnace. These things are almost completely gone now. Uh, good riddance. <clears throat> they were not the great. I mean, they worked and so on. And the natural gas conversion made it so that you didn't have to deal with coal, oil, and wood. Uh, you didn't have to deal with any of that, and maintenance on it was considerably less. But you still had an efficiency of probably less than 50%. Building inspector one time tell me that we're looking at this old octopus, and he says, yeah, those are the most efficient furnaces ever made. And I just looked at him and said, are you freaking crazy? The vent temperatures in these things were oftentimes well over 600 degrees. Uh, a gigantic draft hood or draft diverter which sucked a whole bunch of air out of the house. I mean, it was necessary to make it work. If you want to know anything about draft hoods and draft diverters, I've got a couple of videos on them. And uh, you can look at those if you want to. It's it's really century-old technology. The heat exchangers in these things were either cast iron, which meant thick, really thick, or they could have been carbon steel, a lot of them were, and that was also thick. If you compare that to the modern furnace, it'll have a heat exchanger that is probably about maybe 26 gauge. I'm not absolutely sure on that. But uh, these things were a quarter inch thick. And you say, well, they last forever. Yeah, that's the problem. They lasted forever. Uh, there was no real efficiency with them. You know, you come across one of these things, you can fix them uh, if there's problems with them. But you know, you really need to get rid of that thing. Uh, it's got asbestos on it. There's going to be problems getting the asbestos off. You'll have to have a certified asbestos guy in there to deal with this thing. That's why a few of them are still left in there. The time is gone for these. They're just, it's over. And I would always be recommending for the customer to replace them. What some have actually done is they just encase the entire furnace with plastic <laughs> and uh, leave it there and put a furnace someplace else. You know, uh, I don't know. That, I don't think that's the great, greatest idea either. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with these things. They, they, were, uh, they were good for their time. If you look close on this thing, it's actually even got a humidifier on it, which it runs a little bit of water into a cast iron bowl. And if the fire is on inside, it's hot enough to boil the water. And it, it, uh, it humidifies the house a little bit. I don't think most of those were hardly ever used. But uh, those are out there. Uh, I may do a video on repairing them. Uh, there's not a lot to them anyway, but, uh, but I may do a video on repairing the things too, but uh, certainly I'd recommend to get rid of them. That's it on this one.